Get out of my seat there. This is, uh, this is Tiny Bruce. This is the uh, thing that creeps me out every time I see it. It's a doll that Colleen Garber made for me for my 30th anniversary. I don't know what to do with them, but uh, get out of my seat. So, our devotion for this morning is called, He Heard Me. And the reading is from Psalm 34, 1 to 7. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. I had a mean older cousin by the name of Bill. Um, Bill was the only son of my Uncle Wilmer and my, my aunt who passed away when I was three years old. I guess Bill was probably about 10 or 11 then. And so it was just Uncle Wilmer and Billy and Bill didn't have any siblings and any there. So when we got together on family get at gatherings, uh, Bill tended to pick on us younger ones. And in particular, I guess I was his favorite to pick on. He would uh, pinch my cheeks and call me Glenna Verna, little, little Verna. My mother was Verna. He'd call me Little Verna. And he was always being mean to me. And I think part of it was that he and my three Enzer cousins, they were all about seven or eight years older than I was. And I was the oldest of the next group of cousins. And so I always wanted to sort of tag along with them, you know, I always wanted to be around with the bigger kids because they seemed sort of cool. But that also made me a target for Bill's attentions. And so, so there was one Sunday right around Christmas time one year, I was probably, I don't know, nine or 10. And we were over at my grandpa and grandma Kishnick's house. We'd been there for lunch. And Grandpa noticed that I was rather glum and quiet, and so he asked me what was the matter. And I told him that we were going to the Mosner family gathering for Christmas that evening, and that meant that Bill was going to be there. And I knew that at my aunt's house, it was too small a house for me to stay away from Bill, and he was too big for me to fight. And I told him he's always mean to me. So Grandpa said, well, would you like to stay overnight here with me and Grandma? And I was like, really? This was a solution that I hadn't even thought of. And so I asked my dad if it would be okay, and he said it was fine with him, and Mom said the same, and so it was settled. I'm going to stay overnight with Grandpa and Grandma, and I'll let my two brothers fend with Bill. <laughs> I didn't ever worry about them on that. I just said... This is the solution I've been looking for. So I, I was living up the good life. We had supper, we had dessert, we had snacks later, we watched TV. And when it came to be bedtime, Grandma fixed up a really nice bed for me on the couch in the living room. And so I got ready for bed and I got snuggled up in there. I said my prayers and Grandpa came in and said good night and turned off the light and went to their bedroom. And then it got quiet in the house. And in the quiet, I heard strange creakings. I heard the floorboards popping. The windows were rattling. I heard the wind moaning in the eaves. And I became afraid and I started to cry. So Grandma heard me crying and sent Grandpa in to investigate. And Grandpa came in and said, what's the matter? And I told him I was afraid. And he reassured me and told me that he and Grandma were right around the corner and that there wasn't anything for me to be afraid of. So he, again, he said good night and he went on to bed. And it got quiet and I heard sounds. I had never spent the night away from home before. And so once again, I was afraid. 
The next thing I knew, it was morning. The sun was shining through the window, and the curtains were all lit up with the backlighting. And, and then I thought, wait a minute. This isn't Grandpa's living room. Where am I at? And I rolled over, and there was Grandma. I was in bed with Grandma. Grandpa had carried me in, put me into bed with Grandma, and he was sleeping on the couch in the living room. <laughs> Every time I, because I've done the same thing for a number of grandkids, and I, every time I do, I have to smile because I think, yep, yeah, I remember when Grandpa did that for me. So it's just turn around is fair play. So, so anyway, I guess what I, I want to talk about is the fact that in our text for today, the psalmist says that he sought the Lord and he answered me. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. But I want you to notice something in that devotion, something that's always stood out to me. He says, the Lord heard me and answered me and he relieved me of all my fears. Then two verses later, he says, he delivered me from, or he, he saved me out of all his troubles. So the first time, he says the Lord addressed his fears. And then in the second instance, he addresses the problems that he's got. Our fears make everything more difficult. You've probably, you've probably experienced this firsthand. Our fears often outweigh our troubles. Our fears magnify our troubles. Our fears aggravate our problems. Our fears steal our strength and our attention. Our fears make everything more difficult. Our fears sometimes threaten to cripple us entirely. Even before the troubles arrive, our fear causes us to be weak. And our Lord knows this. And so he addresses first our fears, and then he helps us with our troubles. Fear of the unknown, fear of things imagined, fear of what might happen, fear of COVID-19, fear of perceived threats, all of those things are part of our landscape at present. We're afraid of what might come, what may be out there. And make no mistake about it, the devil preys on our fears. He feeds on our fears because he knows that when we are afraid, we are tempted to, to jump to any conclusion, accept any rumor, take, take any compromise to alleviate those fears. He knows that when people are full of fear, they will do things, say things, accept things that under other circumstances they wouldn't. And so first he addresses our fears and then he helps us with our trouble. The Lord addresses their fear with his word, with his gifts, with his promises, with his grace. He reminds us that he is always with us to the end of the age. He reminds us that we are his people, baptized into Christ Jesus, resurrected with Christ, seated in heavenly places with Christ until that day when he takes us home. So there's always this promise that he is with us. And so he says our fears are the very thing he attacks first. It's not by coincidence that Jesus' most used command in the Gospels is, do not be afraid, fear not. First, he helps us overcome our fears. Then he addresses our needs. Grandpa addressed my fear when he said I could stay overnight there. And then he addressed my need when he gave up his place in bed and put me there with Grandma. He gave up his place and he slept on the couch so that I could rest unafraid and unmolested. God knows your fears. He knows your needs. And in each case, he says, fear not. I will deliver you. You can trust in that. Take comfort in that. Fear not. Amen. Would you join me as we pray? Heavenly and gracious God, we give you thanks that you speak to us a word of comfort, that you address our fears, and that by addressing our fears, you prepare us and enable us to address our needs. We pray, Father, that 
when those times come, when we're afraid, when we worry about what might happen, what might come, what might be said, what might be done, that you would address those fears, that you would speak that word to us that says, do not be afraid, and that then you would send the help we need. Father, in our nation right now, there's all of this unrest. There's there's all of these things that might happen, that could happen. We have an election coming that's very important. And, and in all of those things, we worry about what might happen, what could happen, what will be the result. Father, help us to take each day as it comes, and that we put our trust in you above all things, and that we'd lay these things in your hands, trusting that you're going to work them out according to your set plan and purpose. Father, address our fears and grant us your help with our troubles. Watch over those that are struggling with their health, especially those that are battling cancer, those afflicted and affected by COVID, and for those that are currently unemployed or who, who live in fear at home. We pray, Father, that you grant us release from those things, and we put it all in your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, the only announcement I really got for today is a, a reminder again, we're still looking for people who will let Ryan Dietrich teach them how to operate our system. We need some helpers on Sunday, um, four, five, six people, so that they could take turns doing that so they wouldn't always have to be back there in the booth. But certainly would be people who would take some of the burden off of Ryan as well. So if you're techie in any way or you're just willing to learn something new, let us know and we'll we'll put you in contact with Ryan and he'll train you up. He's pretty good at that too. So so in the meantime, God be with you, and we'll see you again next week. And uh, mini-me still creeps me out. God be with you. Bye-bye.